Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint this Contempt of Dreadnought which is the new plastic version from the uh, the new Horus Heresy box game that Games Workshop sent me. As you can see the model has been completely built and primed in black. Uh, I've just left the arms and backpack off uh, you know, for ease of painting. Here you can see one of the Imperial Fists and I've painted this in a separate video that you can uh, find where I uh, used an airbrush and some oil paints. Now I'm going to try and get the same sort of look in this uh, on this model but quite a few people asked me if I could paint something without using an airbrush or oils. Uh, so all the uh, processes that you're going to see for this video are just using normal paint and paintbrushes so you don't need anything fancy. You can see I'm going to be starting off here with uh, a very large brush and some Mornfang Brown. Now it's there's a few things to take note here uh, first of all, the Mornfang Brown is very heavily watered down. It's around about two parts water to one part paint. So normally this wouldn't be good for getting a base colour down because it's going to be quite translucent. And I think you can see that fairly clearly without when I'm applying it here, you can see the black primer shows through very, very easily. Also, the large brush that I'm using, so I'm using a, a, an Artist Opus uh, large dry brush. Uh, you don't have to use uh, an artist opus brush. You can, you know, get like a makeup brush or something like that. Um, you know, I just find these, uh, uh, you know, they, they work a little bit better and they're a bit more um, hard wearing, so they don't, uh, run, you know, wear out as quickly. But you know, any sort of large round brush will do the job. It's not really important in terms of the uh, the marks you're making. So you can see here as I'm, you know, doing this sort of stippling motion, it leaves all these. Uh, this sort of pattern on the model. That doesn't matter. It's not something that I'm looking for specifically. It will help a little bit to get this kind of mottled, worn, weathered look a, a bit in the end, but um, you know, it's not something specifically that you want in the in the paintwork. It's just you know a byproduct of covering it all quickly and getting that sort of smooth finish. And I, I say the smooth finish because it has to be so watered down, and you have to do multiple coats. So here you can see I'm just doing the uh, the final coat now of the Montang Brown, and you're probably going to need three or four coats of it just to get uh, to this kind of look. But that this is good enough. Uh, you know, you could add more layers if you want just be aware as you keep adding layers you need to keep them thin it's a, it can be a bit frustrating as you're layering it up because uh, it looks like when you first apply the paint it's very wet uh, but you can kind of see the color on it but then as it dries it becomes very translucent and it's a lot darker so you think oh i'm hardly making any progress but once you've done like two or three layers it really does make a difference and you know you get something that looks kind of like this it's very sort of mottled but it's still covered uh, all the armor panels you know don't worry too much also about hit hitting any of the metal parts uh, we're going to be painting over those later anyway uh, and it really won't make that much of a difference if you get it on the, you know the areas that are going to be painted metal you can see there i used some p3 mora white and mixed it in with the mornfang brown uh, don't worry if you don't have any p3 paints you don't have to use the, the Mora White, any kind of white will do. You could even use something like White Scar uh, or a lighter color. You could use, you, if you wanted, you could go straight for a, a darker bone color, maybe something like Morgas Bone. It's a bit lighter than what I'm going to be applying here, so it would be a bit starker as you apply it. Uh, and you might be like, oh, have I gone a bit wrong here? But yeah, don't worry too much because when you apply the yellow later on, it will cover up a, a lot of these uh, faults anyway. Well, they're not really false, but like there's going to be, it's going to look a bit interesting, shall we say, as you progress. And you're just going to be doing the same thing again, but in a more controlled manner. So uh, I've changed the paintbrush here. Uh, it's now the uh, the smaller uh, dry brush. So again, any kind of round brush will do, but just make it a little bit smaller. And the reason it's small is just you can be a bit more controlled in the positioning of the the marks that you're making. So you can see the dabbing motion that I'm making now it's a little bit uh, you know more controlled more precise and I'm placing this uh, where I want the light to fall uh, so that's mainly going to be like on the chest the top of the chest fortunately the contemptor has a really nice line going straight across the middle separating the his upper and lower stomach kind of area that works brilliantly for like a, a hard line um, shadow underneath so it you know, creates a well by the time it's finished anyway, it'll create a, a really nice high contrast look and it'll make the highlights stand out even more. And I mean, you'll be able to see that uh, by the end and see what I'm talking about, really. 
but for the position of the highlights now to some extent the brush is going to dictate the shape of the, the highlights a little bit because it is so large uh, this isn't so, this isn't a form of stippling where you'll be having complete control over the uh, the highlights because if you're doing this properly select for a display level piece and you're doing stippling you get a small brush and you have watered down paint and you do lots and lots of marks over and over and over you get very fine control it takes a long time completely inappropriate uh, for doing like a large model for quickly for gaming purposes uh, but you know for here you can see you know I've just been dabbing the paint on and you just keep doing it over and over now again you're going to have a similar issue as you had with the Mornfang Brown in that it, because it's so wet as you're applying it it um it looks like you made a mark when it's when you first touch the model with the, the paintbrush but then as it dries it becomes more translucent and quite dark so you have to go over it multiple times here you can see I've just very quickly worked up the power claw a bit because I just wanted to make sure that the yellow was actually going to uh, look correct uh, you know, while going through the process because I've done this similar thing on smaller models but not on a large one with these big flat open spaces and I just wanted to make sure that it still looked kind of yellow <laughs> after I've done it um, but you're going to be doing the same process again now so this is uh, Uriel yellow and it's watered down again around about two parts water to one part paint but just check it. One other thing to take in, uh, note of actually is that my brush is not dry. This is not dry brushing. And it's really important that you don't paint this like you're trying to dry brush. You do not want to be rubbing the brush on anything. You don't want to be trying to pick out any hard edges or details. Uh, this is you know, very wet paint. It's important that the paint is wet with, with all the layers that you're going to be applying. You can see as I'm going over with the yellow. Uh, so, and just to be clear, while the brush is so the brush is damp it's not wet you don't want to just dip it in your water pot and then start trying to do this because the paint will just run everywhere you'll make a horrible mess damp you know put the paintbrush in the water pot then rub it on your kitchen roll get it get as much of the water off of it as you can because you're not going to make it dry anymore you know the brush is now damp uh, but you know get as much off as you can then dip it in the paint then roll the excess paint off again and then start dabbing onto the model and it'll it'll work exactly how you're seeing on the screen here uh, it, you get what look like little blobs little islands of yellow appearing everywhere but it will sort of all blend in together as it dries um, and it's gonna look a little bit pale now you might be like oh this is this is rubbish it's gonna take forever if you want to do this quickly just get an airbrush <laughs> that's, that's the best advice I can give it's I mean to be fair this doesn't take that long the whole model uh, took me around about five hours to do and I think it looks you know pretty good at the end so it's, it's not uh, too long in terms of the um, you know for the quality that you get for the time you spend I think is fairly reasonable but you will be able to speed up the process because this is where all the time goes on the model uh, adding these uh, yellow layers the other parts of the painting are quite quick so, uh, you know so if you want to get an army done very very quickly get yourself a nice airbrush uh, and learn how to use it so that's the learning the, the steep learning curve but after you've got that you'll be able to smash through your army way way quicker and get a very consistent result as well uh, you can see that I'm actually focusing again on where I want the light to fall on the model uh, so kind of like going over specifically the areas that were highlighted where it was the Mornfang brown mixed with the white uh, and you just keep going over and over these areas it's, kind of important that you do the whole model in one go uh, and the reason for that is because it takes a while for each layer to dry remember there's quite a lot of water that you're working with here uh, so you can focus on one area and then kind of keep moving round and round waiting for each area to dry so then by the time you've done the last area you can go back to the beginning and go over that again now you want to get yellow all over the model I know it you can see in the video that I've just been focusing on the highlight points um, but you do want to get yellow everywhere on this uh, so even put some stippling on the sort of the brown areas like the underside of the stomach and you know the lower legs um, one thing to say about the lower legs is don't spend too long on them they're going to be covered in dust and dirt by the end of the video so um, what you're going to find is when I start putting chipping and little highlights and things like that on there 
Uh, I don't pay as much attention to the legs, uh, but by the end of the video, when you see all the, the dust on it, you'll understand uh, that it's it would just you wouldn't see it. It would be a waste of time, uh, and that is all part of the process of uh, you know trying to get the model done quickly as part of an army. Uh, so you know I am painting it as an army piece. I can just see there on the uh, the video how I've painted a uh, a hair onto the chest there. That will be removed. <laughs> don't worry. Um, this stage is a little bit different to how I've been painting the uh, standard soldiers in that I'm putting glazing layers on now. Uh, I say glazing, so it's using the same Uriel Yellow as I've been using for the stippling, but I'm going to be applying some uh, decals or transfers. And I need the layer underneath the, uh, the transfers to be uh, very opaque and you know, quite finished. Uh, because it's otherwise I'm going to have to be painting around those uh, for the the later stages. Now there, there will still be some uh, painting required going around the shapes a little bit, but uh, it's just important that the kind of the finish here on the very bright focal point areas is a bit more opaque. Um, as I said, I am going to be uh, you know going over later on stages, which will be after the uh, the washes but it, because I have to apply the transfers before the washes, they still need to be quite opaque. I hope this makes sense. I mean, you'll see what what's going to happen in the video anyway, but um, just to talk a little bit about the uh, these glaze layers that I'm applying. Uh, I'm using a size uh, one brush. You can use uh, like just a large brush. That's the, the important thing, really. You don't go for a size zero, zero or smaller. Uh, because it'll just take longer whereas you know the uh, the larger brush will get the job done way quicker and using so it's as I said before around about two parts water to one part paint but I mean you might need it even thinner by this stage so you can add a just all you have to do is just add a bit more water to it so maybe up to two and a half parts water uh, just check on your hand or something before you apply it it wants to be quite wet and fluid um, It'll look yellow when it's first applied, but then as it dries, it becomes more translucent. So very similar to how all the previous layers have been applied. But you're just focusing on the the focal points, so the, the center of the model, the head and the chest and things. Uh, and it should look something like this. Uh, and then I've just given it a quick coat of gloss varnish. Now, if you do have an airbrush, do it with the airbrush, it's quicker, but um, you can hand paint it on as well. Uh, so just you know very simple uh and i've only re so i painted it on by hand the uh the gloss varnish that i've applied is only where i'm going to be applying the decals or, or transfers uh you know it's interchangeable word <laughs> the same thing right uh, i'm using now uh, micro set you can get microsol and micro set if you're doing it the proper long way use the microsol first it'll soften the transfers uh, to make them fit a little bit you know helps to fit them on the model and then you put the micro set on afterwards i find the micro is just a complete waste of time just slam the the micro set down put some of that down first so that it can eat away the film from the back put the transfer down then put the micro set on top of it as well so it's eating away from the front and the back at the same time and then you know once you're happy with the placement leave it to dry for a few hours i mean really ideally you would leave it to dry overnight so that the uh, chemical reaction can work I didn't. I just, you know, blasted through the process. I wanted to get this done uh, quickly, uh, but you'll get a better result if you just leave it a bit longer. Now here, you see, I was trying to put on a, a fist uh, decal from the Horus Heresy, uh, no, I mean the the Forge World uh, Imperial Fist uh, transfer set. Uh, I th although I think Games Workshop Direct are selling this now. Uh, however, it didn't fit where I wanted it to. I, I didn't throw it away. It is actually on the right leg, his left, as we look at it. Um, just hidden away at the side there, but I did use the, the transfer still, and then I put some uh, of the other ones on quickly. Now, uh, while you're waiting for this to dry, you can see there's some water on there. I was going to put uh, a transfer on the arm as well, but then I just couldn't be bothered. Um, but while you're waiting for these uh, transfers to dry, you might as well paint on the metal parts of the model. Now, if you're going to do the main body of the, uh, the Contemptor while you're painting, just be a little bit careful. You do not want to touch the transfers while they're drying. You're just going to make a mess, push things around, uh, tear them probably. 
Um, this is just me rushing to get things done, uh, you know, because I don't want to wait. <laughs> but um, ideally, again, you will wait for the transfers to dry before you uh, start painting all the metal bits. But anything that you want to be metal, paint it. I used um, the uh, Vallejo Metal Color uh, exhaust manifold. And then I'm using the copper, again, Vallejo Metal Color copper. They're airbrush colors. Just be a little bit careful while you're painting them. Uh, because they are very very fluid you can just about see there as I'm applying it they are, they run so easily but at the same time they have a very bright strong finish I did two coats for the tip of the melter gun here or multi melter whatever it is gravita gravis melter cannon something like that <laughs> I did two coats just to get a nice strong finish uh, but they they do flow very very easily so if you get some in a recess they'll flow into that recess uh, so you just have to be a bit more controlled in how you uh, paint them on. Don't get too much paint on your brush. Also at this stage, while you're just waiting for things to dry up a little bit, uh, you can see I'm just painting some of the black areas. Uh, those will be any of the recesses, so in the eye sockets here. Uh, I actually forget to paint them at this stage of the video, but there are some recesses on the halo canopy bit just above his head. You can see them all there, these little oblong kind of shapes. Those all need to be painted in black as well. On the backpack, there are some recesses as well. Uh, you know, just anything that looks like a recess, paint it black. And you're round about ready now uh, to move on to the wash stage. So uh, I've given the uh, well, just just importantly, just before we get to the wash stage, I've coated all the transfers I've painted on with another coat of gloss varnish and when I'm applying this I'm you can see I'm doing it by brush again and this is it's the gloss varnish it, I know it looks a little bit matte <laughs> when it's drying it's just the the sort of the way that I'm painting it on it, it's definitely gloss varnish uh, but what you're doing is trying to disguise the edge of the the transfer so some of the film will still be visible now if you've done it sensibly and waited overnight for it to dry it and you can uh, some stages you can add like another layer or two of the micro set just to help eat it away uh, you'll get a, a better finish but um, you know after all that still put a layer of gloss varnish on and it'll just uh, hide any of the edges of the the film of the transfer if they haven't eaten away too much so now we're going to cover the whole model in contrast paint now this is a little bit uh, risky and uh, the main reason why I like to do this with oils is because oils take a long time to dry whereas the uh, the contrast paint it does not take a long time to dry uh, I strongly suggest you do this in sections don't try and do the whole model at once so here you can see I'm just going to be doing the top part of the body and the head uh, I'm using a large brush as well use a large brush I think this is about a size 2 but use bigger if you have it uh, you know size 4 whatever it doesn't matter but a, you know a big brush so you can cover the area very quickly then I'm using contrast medium just washing it over the top this allows me to control uh, where the the contrast is going to flow into it so on all the bright areas like the head and the chest and the top of the uh, carapace here I put I can push away the pigment so that um, there's less of it there and I can push it all, all the rest into the shadows now what you're going to find is you have a massive amount of excess paint do not leave it it will dry thick uh, this is another kind of negative about using the contrast paint method as opposed to using the oil paint um, it, so if you leave it it'll you know it, it's quite a thick layer it's a little bit more um, viscous than the oil wash would be so you have to go back and you have to remove all the excess here uh, and it's just a case of using your large brush washing it off in the water pot and then go back on touch the model um, and remove the areas now the reason that I'm using contrast medium uh, to dilute it and like splashing it on afterwards uh, and not water is that it still will work like contrast but because I'm using the contrast medium so it will still flow into the recesses uh, and keep the shape and you won't get any um, coffee stain or like uh, horrible little uh, stain marks as long as you do this quick enough you know you have to do it while it's all wet if you try and move any of these the pit the paint when it started to dry you will get a very obvious 
coffee stain you know it's a very like hard ring so if you put like a coffee stain where you've got a little bit of coffee spilt over the edge you pick it up you get this very hard ring you'll get the same thing that happens if you try and move any of the paint while it's started to dry a little bit because the center will be wet the outer ring will be dry and um, when you move the wet paint it just leaves the dry hard edge right so now we're at the kind of like the fun part of the painting this is where we're going to get the strong vibrant yellow uh, highlight so we're going back to the Uriel yellow again and it's again glazing so this is probably closer to I still say it's two parts water to one part paint um, you just have to be a little bit um, you kind of like judge it by eye as you're going some areas you might want it to be a bit thicker just to get the, the paint layer going you can see here I'm actually going to glaze over the the transfer and it goes yellow now that so it's instantly taken away the, the brightness of it I do that to start with because it'll help give it that sort of weathered look um, it, it doesn't have a strong look to it then I just went back quickly with a like a wet brush and just pushed some of the excess yellow off the white area but it's still got like a yellow tinge to it uh, that will be the only time that I'm going to glaze over the yellow I mean over the transfer with the yellow but um, you know don't worry too much if you do it you can go back with some colors later in fact I do it off camera but uh, right at the end I looked at the model and thought I just want a little bit more white to punch back onto these the white areas of the transfers because they're very faded now uh, so just get a watered down white uh, and just you know, it's quite heavily watered down again so it'll be about two parts water to one part paint just get a small amount of paint on your brush and just you know carefully pick out a few areas of the white you don't have to cover it all it doesn't have to be perfect this is why it needs to be watered down because uh, you get like a soft mark uh, if you have thicker paint you'll leave a hard mark and then it won't look as good uh, you know so, so it'll just be like soft glaze over some of the white parts so just pop them out a little bit more but for the glazing that i'm doing on now this is so this is like the, the proper painting part if you like of the video um, and to glaze so a glaze is just like a thin layer of paint but unlike a wash so a, like a wash is also a thin layer of paint like it's very watery and you, you've just seen me apply a wash of the contrast uh, paint as well so a glaze is the same thing like it's heavily watered down but it's a much more controlled layer it's just a thin layer so that's when you think of a glaze it's just a thin layer of paint that's translucent and you build up these layers now the idea is to paint towards the brightest highlight point like your focal points on this so you're going to see that I'm spending a lot of time on the chest and head top of the canopy uh, top of the you know the halo protected part of his um, little canopy there and on top of the the contemptors um, sarcophagus area as well also his groin pad area and the tops of the knee pads you know anywhere where I think it's going to look forward to give the model a bit of depth so as he's striding forward the furthest the, the bits closest to you those are going to be the uh, the brightest parts you can see this uh, a couple of other yellow colors on the wet palette so in the top left that's also Ural yellow but that's thicker paint and that's how I can do this chipping on the transfer to make it look like you know this parts chipped off of it and all it so just using the thicker paint just dabbing it on um, be a little bit selective with how you do it you can see I'm using a smaller paintbrush here than I was before uh, just you know tap, tap on it take out a few bits you will think it looks bright to start with uh, but as it dries it'll ma uh, match into the uh, the lower layer of yellow beneath it And again, for the oh, we do the same for all the uh, the transfers on the model. You're just little bits here and there. Don't go too extreme. Mainly around the edges, but you still want to be able to see uh, what the actual um, transfer is. <laughs> so if you put too much chipping on, uh, you won't be able to see. Uh, just as a warning as well for the glaze, and you can see on the head there, uh, I was a little bit excessive with uh, some of the marks I made. Uh, so a little bit of a line towards the right hand side on the head uh, so now I've got to go back with the Ural yellow again this watered down version and soften that transition so it's just a case of, you know if you keep going over an area if it looks like a hard line on something but you go over the edge of that hard line it will soften it just with multiple layers uh, so this is why I say you, you need to test it a little bit um, the nice thing about the glazing is it shouldn't have a big impact to start with 
Uh, it's only when you add multiple layers uh, the grad uh, as they gradually build up that you'll see the difference in the uh, the opacity that you're making. So each layer is quite translucent. Uh, you can see the layer of paint beneath. That's what it means. It just means you can see the light travels through that translucent. Um, so you can see the layers of paint beneath it. The more layers of paint you add, the less light gets through until it's a completely opaque color. Opaque means there's no light getting through. You just see the actual color uh, for what it is. Uh, so no layers beneath it are influencing the color uh, that is visible. You can see here the you know, the nice little um, edge where it cuts in between the the bit that uh, kind of holds his head and then the chest section that is that line. Uh, but if you can get like a, a quite sharp line there, and you can see here uh, I've just done a little bit more layering now, and that sharp line going straight across his stomach makes it looks so neat and nice having that line there separating the yellow top section and then the darker brown underneath. Uh, really allows the yellow to to stand up and and you know be quite vibrant. Uh, a lot of the yellow on this, the vibrancy comes from the fact that it's right next to a dark color. Uh, so you're kind of like tricking your eyes into seeing how um, yellow it is. Um, but yeah, this is the again the, the sort of like the, the painting area, uh, the, the the bit where you just have to spend a bit of time actually painting and not relying on the uh, the techniques um, so this so it can be a little bit more tricky but really you're just pushing wet paint around you don't have to be super precise the only bits that you need to be a bit more precise for are the edge highlights so uh, anything that is has got a hard edge like this little section here use the thicker paint use the thinner brush a very small amount of paint on the brush rub it off on your thumb so you're not going to get any blobs or anything and then just using the edge of the tip of the brush, just run it along these edges. Again, we're still using just the same colors. It's still real yellow at this stage, but you can see how much more yellow the uh, the Dreadnought looks just from all these multiple layers placed on top of each other and having them next to the darker areas. One thing you will find as well is the more you water down the paint, so you can see that the large yellow blob of uh, Ural yellow on the wet palette, it dries out quicker being watered down than the uh, the thicker paint, even though there's uh, less of the uh, thicker paint. So here I'm just going to sort of tidy up a little bit with Mornfang Brown. Uh, the Mornfang Brown is, again, so there's two more versions of the Mornfang Brown, one on the left, we're not using that at the moment. The one on the right, this is watered down, it's around about... Uh, four times water to one part paint again just test it you, you want it to make a very soft mark uh, I'm using a size one brush here and I'm just working into the shadow areas now it depends how much time you want to spend uh, doing this you could make a very opaque shadow and this will take away all of the texture work so in the same way that I've been working on the yellow and it becomes very opaque the, the same will be true for the shadows I'm so personally I'm not that bothered about having a little bit of texture on there because I just think it looks adds to the battle worn look um, but if you want a very perfectly uh, opaque smooth yellow finish you can you know glaze it all with yellow glaze it all with Mornfang Brown just do it multiple times it will take you quite a bit longer but it will look very nice at the end um, you also notice that obviously I haven't covered the whole of the armor panels in bright yellow I've left some a little bit darker in areas so I'm using um, light direction while painting this so that the left hand side of the face as we look at it and the left hand side of the chest they all has a little bit more light on it the legs stepping forward with the knee pad that has brighter light on it it just helps to add depth to the piece you'll find that when you put that on the tabletop it looks much more three-dimensional like this um, and a bit more dramatic as well and the nice thing is in some of the darker areas here you can see so there's staining and like strange marks and things on there you just pick out some of those with the yellow brush like you saw me doing the yellow paint with a, uh, with a thin brush and it'll make it look like there's sort of dents or like imperfections in the armor so now we're going to be uh, adding weathering uh, if you don't want to do any weathering then <laughs> feel fine to stop at this stage you don't have to do this uh, I just enjoy having a little bit of weathering uh, painted on the model it is like the whole style of the painting is done with weathering in mind 
Uh, so just be aware of that. You know, you're not going to get a completely clean look to the model because of the way that the paint's applied on it. Um, but all, all I'm using is uh, Mornfang Brown again. Uh, actually, uh, scratch that. Don't use Mornfang Brown for this. Use Rhinox Hide. Uh, I think I've actually got it off the side of the wet palette. <laughs> the Mornfang Brown is used for something else. It's still going to be used, don't worry. But this is uh, Rhinox Hide that I'm using. Um, I think it was I'd used it for something else and it had bit it started to dry down a bit so that's why it's not visible on the uh, the wet palette here but regardless when you're applying these uh, these little marks um, so some people like to do a brush um, um, sponge chipping uh, and in that case you just tear a small piece of sponge dip it in the paint dab it off on some kitchen roll to take off the excess and then da you know, start dabbing it on the model and you'll get some very nice chipping effects the only thing is that doing that tends to give you a repeat pattern like a clone stamp and you don't have that much control about where the uh, the paint goes whereas I find for this uh, with the uh, the chipping marks I make a little goes a long way and I have complete control about where the where it goes so actually it fills the space better because it's exactly where I want it to be uh, and I don't have to worry about you know getting it on parts of the model that I don't want uh, and you want this paint a little bit thicker. So this is around about 50-50 water to paint. You don't really want um, translucent scratches. <laughs> you want the uh, these chips to be um, very opaque so that it's just like one dot and then done. You don't want to have to keep going over these areas. When placing them, f focus first on edges. Edges uh, will naturally take more chips uh, and because like the force of the of any impact catching them will be uh, multiplied because it's a large force on a very small surface area. Uh, so you know edges will naturally get chips. And then for the rest of it, it's just a case of looking and thinking. You know, will that look good if I put a, a bit of chipping there? It's almost kind of like using freehand. You're filling the space with uh, weathering. Uh, Another good tip is if you've got little bits on the model where you know this f it looks a bit weird or has you haven't covered the, a bit very well, you can put a bit of um, you know chipping over the top and that will disguise it. Or if you've gone wrong with a highlight line, anything like that, weathering is perfect for it. Uh, one thing I strongly recommend you do not do is putting little crosses everywhere on your weathering. Uh, I see it um, quite often where people are doing scratches all over models one scratches you know they should be fairly infrequent it's mostly going to be like chips uh, scrapes or bullet impacts things like that um, having lots of lines over everywhere just looks kind of weird um, I suppose maybe if they've walked through a load of razor wire or something like that but uh, you know anyway it's the scratches would tend to be you know, more like multiple of them going in the same direction things like that but lots of people I see put little X's on the model and it just looks weird uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's not a very natural mark and um, in the UK at least we always put little X's on our messages when we send to uh, like loved ones like your partner or whatever because they, they represent kisses so every time I see them on models it looks like uh, people have put little kisses all over them uh, to represent weathering and uh, it, like I say, it just looks a bit weird to me. Um, so anyway, um, once you've positioned all of your chipping on the model, uh, you go back and this is, I'm using the Uriel yellow again. So this is the only yellow you need on the model, Uriel yellow, but I've added a small amount of white. So I've added P3 Mora white, but again, any other white uh, will get the job done. And you're just putting a little line underneath. I mean, you don't have to do all of them, and definitely don't do it on the legs. So you can see I've put these big blobs of paint on the legs for the chipping and things. Uh, do it some on the knee pads because those are quite nice, but not on like the shins down onto the feet. It's really not worth it. Um, you know, so you just pick out a few or as many as you want. You could spend as <laughs> you spend a long time putting all this weathering down. Um, you could actually go a bit over the top, but it would be nice, you know, for things like Death Guard as well. Uh, going very heavily with uh, you know chipping everywhere. But it'd be the same process. You just do more of it. Um, but you know, again, focusing on the edges, things like that. Here, I'm going to put some streaking, uh, like grime streaking. Now, so remember, there are two versions of Mornfang Brown on the wet palette here. The one on the right is the heavily watered down one, around about four parts water to one part paint. The one on the left is the thicker paint. So this is around about 50/50 water to paint. So you start with the one on the right, and you put these very thin translucent streaks going down. 
and then you go to the one on the left and just at the top where it touches the uh, the chip that's where it's darker and that will represent the um, the grime being thickest or if it's like rust or whatever thickest where the chip is and then it dilutes as it streaks down the model All right, so you get like a nice uh, fade with the, the line that you've painted in makes it look a little bit better uh, and just um, more interesting really uh, so now I'm just going to show you how to do the eyes uh, these are very simple if you've seen how I painted the uh, the tactical marines um, it's exactly the same process I'm using Sotec green which is a, a greeny blue uh, and I always get hung up on the name but it, it's a blue color really uh, just a greeny one and um, you, so you paint in the well for staff we painted the eye black if you remember before then you paint the eye itself as fairly opaque uh, you might need two coats just to, to fill it in. You can leave the, the little black edge all the way around. That'll help to pick the eye out a bit, but it doesn't matter too much either way. And then the I've taken another little bit of Sotec green and I've watered it down. This is around about four parts water to one part paint. Uh, the really important thing that you can see me doing is that I'm glazing. So it's glazing again, same way as I did the yellow, same way as I did the Mornfang brown on the armor. Uh, but I'm glazing from quite low down on the uh, below the eye, glazing up towards the eye. Always push the paint up towards the eye. Never drag it away. You will leave a harder mark. Uh, it will you, like by doing it this way, you deposit the excess paint in the eye area. Whereas if you did it the other way, you would deposit the excess paint below the eye, which will then um, it just looks horrible um, and wrong and you don't get the nice transition and you'll get like a, a blob of paint. It'll look like he's crying almost. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so again, you can see I've just added some whites to the Sotec green now. So you've got Sotec green at the very bottom, then I've added a white, then a bit more white, and then it's just pure white at the top. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You layer on the different steps. Uh, getting lighter each time and every time that you go to a different step you make it smaller until uh, you're just focusing more on the very front of the eye it'll uh, so that leaves some color at the you know at the edges of the transitions uh, so you'll still get some of the blue effect there because if you just painted the whole of the area white and then left it then you've got a white eye uh, and was I mean, that's not too bad if you uh, have quite a strong color around it but it just looks a little bit more interesting having the uh, the transition within the eye as well because you you will see the color at the edges so it's very definitely a like a, a greeny blue rather than just having a white eye and then paint the uh, the lower edge of the eye socket as well so the light's catching that edge just making it a bit brighter you could probably do it a bit neater than i've done there that's you know a bit of a rush job but um, it it gets the job done And then you can see um, just taking it up to white as the, the final uh, highlight, just right at the, not quite the front of the eye, but like the center front area. Um, and it just punches the contrast up a little bit more. This works as a really nice spot color as well. So the eyes stand out quite strongly against the rest of the model. Now, uh, if you want, uh, so I've just left the, the model, uh, the head yellow, uh, but there are different ways of painting these uh, dreadnoughts um, depending on where they've come what the the history of them is so some of them could have like red heads uh, with a white stripe or some just have a, a red stripe or they could be like from a devastator company have a black stripe um you know they, they could have like uh, veteran honors all sorts of things so um i'd recommend maybe googling it <laughs> or um i think the i think it's actually in the uh, the new books that are coming out as well uh, i'm not sure but Regardless, if you Google it, you should be able to find uh, some uh, heraldry for the Imperial Fists to see what all the different helmets uh, mean. Uh, so now at this stage, it's just a case of filling in the metallic bits. Uh, you can see there, I used, so I filled up the uh, well palette there with some of the exhaust chrome again, and I'm also using chrome. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful with chrome because it's super bright and shiny and that will be quite uh, jarring against all the weathered elements of the model but 
at the same time, I, I want to pick out some of the harder edges and things. And again, it works for scrapes and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it, it's handy to, to just be able to pick out some of the, especially some, some of the rivets as well. Uh, but also on these ball joints, uh, the idea would be that these uh, have a lot of movement in them. So they're always going to be clean uh, with, with maybe a bit of oil in the recesses or something. But having I, I, this again is true on the uh, ball joints on the hips and also these little um, round bits, <laughs> whatever they're called, on the uh, the hips as well. Uh, really anywhere that you just want to have the, the metals standing out. Now if you want you could just keep the, the metals really dulled down but I just found it a bit more interesting having a few parts highlighted up. Now don't go too excessive. Also I strongly recommend that uh, the central parts with the teeth in um, that you leave those dirty brown where the, the contrast paint dried. If anything, you could give those another layer of the contrast paint as well. Um, they're one of the more tricky parts on the, the plastic element of the model because there's a like a gap. It's not really a gap, but you, um, the leg parts come in two halves and you glue them together and you'll get this sort of seam where the two halves meet. Uh, the problem is that for most areas on the model, like, you know, in the center of the carapace or whatever, you can just scrape off the excess and it's very easy to fix that. It's really hard to do that on these little uh, areas with the teeth in. Um, so you tend to get a little bit of deformation in those parts. If you just load it up with a load of paint, <laughs> um, maybe even, you know, whatever you can find, something a bit more thick, a bit more viscous, sort of get that in there as like an oil effect and it helps to disguise any of those sort of uh, issues. But here you can see is the uh, final uh, thing. A couple of bits just to talk about that I didn't show in the video. The uh, On the melter, I used some black Templar contrast paint just on the tips, just to make it look blackened. Same again on the exhaust on the back of his backpack. Um, that's pretty much it for the model itself. All the other processes you can see in the video, even if I didn't um, cover the whole model, it's all the same things have been used. Uh, the only other thing is on the base, uh, I used Forge World Dark Sand, uh, and that was sort of sc just scrunched onto the uh, the legs, the lower legs. Then I used some matte varnish again, covered that over it, let that dry. Or even while it's wet, you can still do another layer of uh, dark sand, then another layer of matte varnish, and then another layer of sand. So it will, it, you've got like quite a thick, um, built up, dirty layer and uh you know it's not going to go anywhere now it's all stuck on the model and it looks uh, it helps to give that sort of really grimy effect and also it hides the fact that you haven't highlighted any of the chips or <laughs> anything on the lower legs um, and the nice thing as well is it kind of grounds the model onto the base uh, so you know the base is done in exactly the same way lots and lots of layers of dark sand with varnish on top um uh, you know just to help it all sort of gel together it looks like you know visually it looks like he's walking and getting dirt on him uh, but anyway that's the uh, the end of the video hope you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe i um, i'm still going to be pumping out all of these uh, heresy videos and <laughs> hopefully a few more uh, different pieces as well just to uh, spice it up a little bit um, and also i have my uh, patreon and personal website which have uh, lots more tutorials and things and a bit more high-end painting uh, but that's that's it that's the end of the video thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time